this is what you do before you glue everything together and you do your final fit and finish and everything is you you functionally put it together work out your draw space work out the the, the power plant the first thing you got to do is the, is figure out the power plant and i got to tell you this one has a doozy of a power plant it's got a 10 millimeter wide catch of molded delrin and what looks like um molded molded nylon and it's it, it's it's a very wide catch and it's reversible too so if you notch one side of it out you can always flip it over and use the other that's really great so people having problems with the straightness of 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 it flying ha huh, no problem <laughs> just make it a stefan blaster now why does it need such an effing long barrel well this thing has the same air capacity, actually two cc's more air capacity than a 1995 Kenner crossbow out of the box. No kidding, no kidding. Yes, it's it's not thinner diameter and four inches long. It's 2.35 inches long on the draw, and yeah, it needs that big of a barrel to realize it. Now, what I'm going to do is I was here thinking about putting metal around it or carbon fiber around this whole thing and then putting two pieces of stainless steel here and giving it a stock it already looks pretty much like a grease gun um but i'm thinking it might it might actually do really well as an smg yeah i mean really the only thing is is that this is 18 kilograms so this draw here is going to be quite something i'm putting wings up here to help me draw Another idea is to take this out and just put a draw handle below that. I, I thought about that. Um, I've had a lot of thought about this blaster. But what we could see with this is something that with a 7 8 by 2 millimeter gauge spring with 12 coils, could with, a, with 5 inches of free length, could be more powerful than a long shot. It could happen. Yes, it very well could. It very well could. You have a shorter stroke and more air. You do have more friction with the longer uh, diameter, but you also have less friction because you're dividing it shorter. One of the key things the Bird of Prey has. Now, what does this have on the Bird of Prey? Actually, quite a bit. The tube on this is, an, is, is one and a half inches, and it already flies extremely nice and fast. Okay? With a bird of prey, it took a lot of tinkering to get it to the speeds it's at. But that's long shot diameter. That's even smaller than this. Now, I remember we were we, a lot of my friends and stuff were looking at the width of these pistols when I, when I was designing. And um, I was going to do something that was 38 millimeters in diameter. This is 45 millimeters in, in, in width. Okay? And I was going to do something that was 38 on the, on the wide. You know, I'm almost thinking that was a good idea. <laughs> it's, 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 this is, if this is not too big, this, I don't see what else is, but it's the barrel. Yeah, it's long, but it's going to kill. Oh my gosh. And so I just have to wait for some resin to laminate it in, get my fitting finished all really nice. So it's, I'm not in a hurry when I laminate the barrel in here. Let me take it, let me, let me show you the barrel and the pusher real quick. Okay. As everybody knows, my design is a top tab like that, and then I use a polished piece of um, of 316 stainless, and then I have these three locking rings in here that's going to laminate into my base and cast epoxy. Now I'm using a marine epoxy that's actually meant to be cast. In other words, it's slow; it doesn't heat up too quick. It's not going to put crystalline cracks or fractures in it. See, if I went in and I bought just normal epoxy from the store i would have cracks now of course i did the same method i'm doing with the plunger tube that i did with the red recon taliator but the the layer of epoxy on that is only 3 16 thick then it has go to glue behind it to seal it this is going to have about a half an inch to 5 8 inch of epoxy filling this whole back area right here and when that happens it's going to make it so this is held in, but it's also going to hold the plunger because it will make it so the pusher goes forward and back. Really nice. Mm-hmm. So that's it right then. It's got the same curved ramp as a Mauser file. Yeah, it's pretty much set up like a Mauser. And there it is. The pusher's different. It doesn't have to go as far back because uh, the, 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 the end of the plunger is like right there. And you'll be... you'll you'll, you'll 
I get a very interesting, interesting solution with that plunger. And of course, I had to take out the entire rival um, ball feeding system and put in a pusher, a magazine, and stuff. And this all has to be fiberglass inside of it so that this is connected to something physical that relates to the barrel. This has to be laminated into here, but that's not a problem. I've done that before with sharp fires. And this all has to be cast. And once that's done, and you have to keep everything perfectly straight when you do that. Once that's all done, it's going to be just killer. I mean, really. And you can see I, I gave the pusher quite a bit of travel. Um, actually, that's too far. <laughs> ah, another one of those one-handed deals. Okay, I'll just put this back in. Ugh. Yeah. So, I have been talking about doing this blaster for a while. And I gave it a lot of thought. I, would be, I don't get in a Cold War. I don't get in a rush. I just do it. And this here being the Thinking Man's channel, I'll tell you. Ah, there we go. Sorry about that. I'll tell you right now. And you can see how I, I, I calculated the fit and everything. I'll tell you right now. There is no overthinking in original design of a modded blaster, especially one that no one's ever done before. No one's ever figured out the math before. Was it hard? I gotta say it was not as hard as the Mauser Fire. Mauser Fire was harder, and I'll tell you why. Because you it, it, this instead of an exoskeleton like the um, like the Chrono Magnum is, that is actually very very tight tolerance. is very very tight. You can barely fit a cut down mag pack D in there. Now the Katana mags are actually gonna be easier. I'm actually making a Sharp Fire a Mauser Fire for Walcom S7. Okay, I'm actually making him one, and it actually gives you more room. The 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 uh, Katana mags actually give you more room to play with than the uh, original Mauser Fire. That thing barely fit. It, it barely didn't work because you got to keep the top rails where the slide is, and I almost had to lose those, and, and it would have been a disaster. So everything lines up perfectly on it, but you also can't completely disassemble this when you are uh, when you're taking it apart. The barrel is laminated in, so it's permanent. It's kind of tricky blaster to work on. I worked on it today. I was working. Uh, I was working on the uh, plunger on the on the back where it catches, and I noticed that my trigger had a, was starting to get a lot more creep. Well, what happens is the very top of the plunger wears away. It erodes, wear and tear. Okay, so what I had to do is I had to go in, put in a layer of crazy glue put in a layer of epoxy and then sand it down so that the plunger fits in there perfectly. Okay, so this is a low inertial plunger, so it doesn't have a plunger rod to orient the uh, plunger head. It is just oriented by it being just one big, looks, looks like some big air gun pellet, basically. And it's held by the tail. Now where it's held by the tail, it pushes up because there's a spring and a catch. So if it's crooked like this, it's gonna release all weird and it's going to have a lot of creep to it. But if you make it real direct to where the top of it up here is actually reinforced that this can't move up, it stays down, that's going to launch perfectly. And I got some really great groups. Oh, I didn't have the camera on, but I got some really great groups. I just went on my uh, table in my garage. I put down some Steffens. I just started firing away. And from across the garage, just one step and two step and three step and boom, 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 just dropped it to the ground. You know, and, and that's open sights. No scope, no nothing, just wow. Another thing I'm thinking of doing is I'm thinking about putting this on a shoulder holster. Because most, okay, let's say you have a quick draw 45 holster um, as shoulder holster. And a lot of people don't like shoulder holsters. There's reasons, you know. But let's say you have it in a vertical position. And what you're doing is you're pulling the, like, from right there, you can see it right there, and you're pulling it down and over. Well, usually you have to take the, you see that middle clasp on here? This has three clasps, actually. It's got um, one here, one here, and one here. It looks complicated, but once you get used to it, 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 holds, it holds a blaster in like nothing else. You can run, fall down hills, it doesn't matter. This is really gonna stay in. Well, usually the middle clasp here, right here, you have to unbutton in order to draw like a 45 automatic or maybe a 44 Magnum, okay? Well, with this thing, those are not snaps. They are neodymium magnets. 
and you just pull them. Now, why couldn't I do this with a 45 automatic holster? Oh, I'll give you one very good reason. <laughs> Steel is magnetic. That's one reason. So not only would it stick to your holster, it would stick to your firearm. Um, th that was an explanation I got from a shooting enthusiast friend of mine the other day. He's like, yeah, but they're, 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 they're magnetic, you know? I mean, maybe the stainless steel ones aren't as magnetic. As magnetic. Um, I know the Springfield wasn't very magnetic, the one I used to own, and it was stainless steel. Uh, but a lot of people have blued, so, eh, and nickel plated, also, you know, normal steel that's magnetic. Yeah, you know, it's like, it would work so well, because you don't have to snap out of the holster. Well, anyway, this you don't have to snap out of the holster, and when you put it up against your, your, your chest, you just, boom, whip it out of there. And it's, and, and it's a great backup blaster. Now, put in mind, I don't just use backup blasters for backup. I use them for closer ranges. So I don't... If I, I got something like this, and I got some crazy spring load in here, and I'm only guessing the kind of speed it's going to do, but let's just say it's going to rival a decent long shot. Okay? Maybe a long shot could do better. Maybe it has more potential to go faster. Maybe, you know, a, a long shot can do 350, 360 if you really tune it up, okay? But this is a blast that's been on for 10 years. And this is a blaster that people, have, everybody's made aftermarket parts for. People have worked on them. A lot of experience. This is brand new. Brand spanking new. And I love new territory. I love it. But I'm guessing that getting this up to 250, 260 is not very hard. With a standard catch, with a standard plunger, um, it actually has a very strong plunger. Um, and if you have a decent pusher brass system on it, it's going to haul fucking ass. I mean, this thing, I was shooting at a friend's place before I took this apart. And he's got a, a folding chronograph. And I got a 180 out of it. 180 feet per second out of that 18 kilogram spring. Um, this was, of course... After I had t I had wrapped the ring with a little bit of Teflon, and I didn't really do a really good job. I just put one layer of Teflon around it just to see what it would do, and it went from about 165, 170 to 180. Do you have any idea how big a rifle ball is and how hard it is to get it to go like even 100 feet per second? Okay, let me put it to you this way. I had put the same spring in here in a big shock, okay, and I got a rifle ball to do 105. That's how fast I got a rifle ball to go. With a Stefan and six and a half inch barrel, it was doing about 200 feet per second. Yeah. So if you think about it, that gives you a pretty good equation right there. And this is what drew my attention with the Kronos Blasters. I really saw the potential for power. If 105 feet per second equals 200 feet per second Stefan, then... I am guessing 160, 180 rival would be like, and that's why I was shooting crazy the other day, is I had actually gotten it a lot faster than I had gotten it before. Um, I was in the 160s before, and now I'm, I'm up in the 170, 180s. And the balls get, yeah, they do, they get real wild. I just, or I have to trim my tab even more, or maybe even lose the spin tab altogether. Okay, or, or just leave it flat in there so it doesn't have any air bleed through. Okay. I am guessing 180 feet per second out of a rival ball is going to fucking haul ass and stuff. And, you know, I, I'm guessing the, the primary one I'm doing right now with one spring, 7 8 by 2 millimeter gauge, 12 coils, 5 inches long. Which, if you take the same spring from Home Depot, it's basically the same amount of coils, but it's 4 inches long. Okay? Um, but one extra inch gives it more pre-compression, and also makes it so you have a, a deeper wire pitch, so that has more power. Um, but it's the same thickness as a home gate, uh, depot spring and gauge. Um, I'm guessing uh, uh, you might be able to get these up to 350. Yeah. It might be doable. It might be done. You know? So, um, would I ever give up on long shots? Oh, no. Heck no. Long shots are cool blasters. They, I, I, I said it in a poll the other day that my blasters I use are not the most... Pra my favorite blasters are not the most practical or practical. But I do kick ass with them. And that my most war practical blaster actually was my Zeus 2. Yeah, it's, it is. It is. Uh, but 
I'm not in those kind of wars and those kind of battle positions. I'm usually sniper. I'm not playing close quarter combat or quick flag or anything else. I'm usually sniper. But this thing can rock. Another suggestion that was given by by Kanan, who's a member of the South Coast, um, uh, yeah, Nerf League, you know, he, uh, yeah, Southeast Nerf League, is a shotgun grip. And I was thinking this shotgun grip off a double breach, but make it so it fits in a piece of PVC. So if we were to take this very same design, this very same profile right here, look at this serrations here. Oh, this is really cool. My friend Ty begged me to buy this blaster. And although it barely comes out, to a designer, having blasters around just to have influence is a good thing, okay? And it, it, it just, yeah. I'm thinking, look, okay, look how your thumbs go over it like that, and your fingers go over. So your hands are actually around it, and then you have this backstop here. I'm thinking this one made to fit a standard piece of CPVC, or in my case, I probably you would use aluminum, 6061, and then put a fixer right on this thing. Now put in mind, this is an insert piece. I can make this out of anything. I can put a, a hole for another piece of pipe here and make that uh, do the shotgun. And then if I have this a little uh, with a little nicer barrel mounted, I can have this guide on that rail. See, like that. And I'd have shotgun, sure. And then I can put that stock on there and oh, would it look right. But me, I'll be honest, I like draw pistols. So to me, I'm not the hottest on shotgun grips, but the people that are, oh, there's definitely a possibility. You have the grip here, you have the arm going up here, attaches into here, okay? You would need to drill this out right here. I would reinforce it with the fiberglass like I'm going to do. And there you have it, you have shotgun. No problem. No problem at all. Uh, back and forth, pull. No problem. Oh, very doable. Very doable idea, okay? So at any rate, I just wanted to show you, I have it together. I just don't have it, like, glued together, sadly. <laughs> so I'm hoping next week I can take this thing out and fire it, give it show some, some test fires. It's going to be gnarly, dude. The, 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 in, the, the, the plunger tube to barrel ratio is 8 to 1. Uh, that means for every inch of air that it, it's flying, it's throwing 8 inches of air into here. Okay, but that's at, um, that's at standard temperature pressure, of course. So, in reality, in compressed air, it's actually, for every 8, it's throwing 5 to 1 at, I think, I, I figured 35 PSI? Yeah, 35 PSI, it's throwing 5 to 1. And then 5 to 1, compressing the dart as it goes out, and this is matched to the volume in here, and it is a length of 11 inches for the barrel and another one and an eighth for the ultra match. It's about 12 inches. But the problem is you cannot make this the standard piece of 12 inch brass. Kind of a bummer. Why? Because you need to make the finger that goes over into there. And you can't make this skip because look at your axis up here. It's not the best. Another thing I want to point out <coughs> is that your plunger tube ends way up here. It does not end back here. So you would like it to be here because then your breach would be right there, but it's there. And also because it's a big ammo format, look how far in your breach is. Oh, it's way down there. You see that? See how far the brass is in? Yeah. So it's not exactly finger accessible. You would need a door kind of like a strife that would open like this and go like that. So if, if this was ever made aftermarket, hint, hint, ah, that's how I do it. But... I, I, I'm, I'm really excited. I really think this could be the best thing since the long shot. I really do. More than any other pistol or any other blaster I've ever worked on. So until next time, this is Chris Cartea saying, don't you go changing. <laughs>